Okay, well, welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about ebooks. Um, we're going to start with a brief overview of the ebooks available at Appalachian State, describing what is available to you. And then John is going to demonstrate how to find ebooks in our library catalog, followed by John and I highlighting two of our ebook resources, EBSCO Coast and Overdrive, with some tips for downloading ebooks onto your personal devices. And last, John is going to tell you about a helpful resource at Appalachian. The ebook collections library guide. So first, how many ebooks and what type of ebooks do we have available at Appalachian? At Appalachian, we have literally hundreds of thousands of ebooks in our library catalog. At least half of these titles are primary source materials, 1500s to the present, including rare books, pamphlets, broadsides, etc. But we also have thousands of current imprints, ebooks in every discipline. We purchase these ebooks. Uh, each of the different vendors, unfortunately, Overdrive, EBSCO, eBrary, due to lack of standardization, have a different way of displaying and notating the ebooks, and they have different methods in which to download the ebooks to your personal devices. And as examples of these different vendors, John and I will be focusing on two ebook vendors to illustrate the differences EBSCO, EBSCO Net and Overdrive. But first, John is going to demonstrate how to find ebooks in our library catalog. Okay, thanks, Beth. Um, what I'm going to do is go into the library catalog. This is going to be the typical place that you're probably going to find our ebooks. You can access some of our ebook collections directly. But most of the ebooks that we have, if not all of them, are in the library catalog. So what I'm going to do is go into our classic catalog or the library catalog. You see in this app search box, the link is right there to the classic catalog. And I'm just going to show you how you can locate, e easily locate ebooks. So I'm going to do a search of global warming and climate change. And it brings up 474 items, but in the middle of the, um, the results list at the top, you'll see a link to modify this search. So I'm going to click on that, and I can go down here under material type, and find, scroll down just a couple of spots, and you'll see ebooks, and then I submit that search. And so it brings up 190 items. And these are going to be coming from uh, some of the various ebook packages that we have. For instance, the very first item that's listed there is Cyclopedia, Encyclopedia of Global Warming and Climate Change is from Sage Publications, and we have access to hundreds of online encyclopedias through this database. And clicking on online access will take me into this particular database. So we can take a look at this Encyclopedia of Global Warming. And what you're going to find during this presentation is um, there's a variety of interfaces. There's a variety of options um, that you can and cannot do depending on which of these uh, databases you go into. For instance, Encyclopedia of Global Warming and Climate Change. Um, the most you could do as far as downloading information and putting it on your desktop or putting it into a iPad, for instance, is you could do a ch just these various entries you see here, Alabama, Algeria, Alliance of Small Island States. You cannot check out uh, this encyclopedia. You can just view it, and then you can download that section. Let me go to the second one, and this is going to be more typical of the type of ebooks you're going to see. Um, this is climate change, the science of global warming, and our energy future. And I'm going to, once again, let's just go ahead and click on the title just to show you the full record of this. Um, you will get a summary. You will get a um, table of contents. And you'll see right below the bibliographic information, full text online. And this is going into ebook collection from EBSCO hosts. And this is uh, probably one of our largest collections. Uh, there's approximately 120 to 130,000 different ebooks in this collection. And at any time, you can go ahead and take a look at the full text of this 
um, particular book. Over here on the left, ebook full text is the e-reader. You can also enter it right here under table of contents. Any of these links will take you into the ebook full text reader. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to give you some description of how to use this in just a moment. Uh, and here's the ebook. And over on the left, you're going to have the table of contents of that ebook. And I can just scroll through the various pages of this ebook. Down at the bottom, there's arrows to move back and forth. And I, I want to talk a little bit more about um, the interface for this collection is in a bit. So right now, I'm not checking out the book. I'm not downloading the book, but I'm able to view the book. And I'm going to go back to the catalog. And I just wanted to highlight record number four down here. It's called Global Climate Change and Public Health. And you're going to see this message, connect to the resource online, ASU only, single user. Um, there are a few ebooks in our collections that are single user only. And what that means is if somebody currently had that book check out, checked out, you would not be able to look at the contents of it. Uh, so if I go ahead and click on, on online access, let's just take a look at it real quick. And yes, I have access. It means nobody has it currently checked out. So there are very few titles like that, but occasionally you may come across the title where you see single user. Most of the ebooks are multiple users. Okay, I'm going to do another search here. And I want to do United States Civil War and slavery. Um, one thing I want to point out, um, and I'm going to go ahead and let's modify this search. I'm going to modify it the same way I did before by material type. Go to ebooks, submit. And in Beth's introduction, she mentioned that we do have a lot, a lot of uh, primary source content. And if you look at some of these records here, I'm going to take a look at number fourth, Patriotic Addresses in American England, 1815 to 1885. This is something that was published by in 1887. And if I click on the online access, this has taken us into one of our primary source databases. It's a database called Slavery and Anti-Slavery. So you may be thinking this is not your typical ebook that you would be looking for. But I'm going to show you how, let's say you're not interested in uh, some of this primary source material. You're just looking in current secondary sources. So what you can do with that search, United States Civil War and Slavery, it brought it up by relevance. And if you look right here across the top below, below the Appalachian State University, I can change that to date. And what that's going to do is arrange it in chronological order with the most recent titles first. So you can see the first item 2014, 2013. So all those primary source materials, it's going to put down at the bottom of um, this all my results list. You can also, though, when you modify a search, if you are getting a lot of primary source material and you're not interested in that, when you go to modify search, you can um, put in here year. So you can say, I want all the material after a certain date. So and maybe this search, I can say after 1990. And I can submit my search. Then I will not include all that primary source material. OK, so that's just quickly um, an easy way to go into our library catalog to modify the search just to ebooks. And if you do have any pressing questions that you're dying to ask, just be sure over in the bottom of um, the uh, screen there for Go Meeting, you'll see uh, where you can put it in the chat box. Um, what I want to do now is I want to go directly into the EBSCO ebook collection. So I'm going to go to article databases right here under find. And we have a array, all our databases arranged in alphabetical order. And I'm going to go to the E's. And it's ebook collection, collection EBSCO. EBSCO also provides many of our, um, about 60 to 70 of our 
online uh, journal databases. And so this is the opening screen. You can browse by category, and you can also search by uh, individual titles up here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a specific title. It's a book called The Oracle and the Curse, the Poetics of Justice from the Revolution to the Civil War. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that. And once again, my ebook full text is where I can view the full text of this. And over on the far right, it was hidden by my uh, GoToWebinar screen. You'll see these uh, icons on the far right of the screen. And the top one is I can search this book. And we've done surveys with students and faculty. And a lot of times, they're, they are definitely not going to read the entire content of the book. They're looking for information within a book. Uh, in this case, I'll just sort of give you an example here. I'm looking for a North Carolina Supreme Court case called State versus Man. This is a notorious case that took place in 1829. And you can see on page 25, there's a reference to this Supreme Court case. Thomas Ruffin declared in the notorious opinion he delivered in State versus Man, 1929. And it has a quote here. And let's just say that quote is important to me. And I want to remember that quote. I could write it down on a piece of paper, but I really don't want to do that. So what I want to do is I want to go over here. And the second icon is I can take notes. And I can copy that quotation that Thomas Ruffin. And then I could paste it into my note. I'll do a few backspaces here to get it into one sentence. And then I can save that note. And let's move this over again. Let's move this down here. So you can see that note right there. And it tells me what page it's on, page 25. So as I go through this book, I can save these notes for future reference. But in order to do that, to save it for future reference, I need to sign in. And EBSCO, and you're going to need um, the sign-in capability when you start checking out books. But let me, go, let me show you what, um, uh, what happens when, let's just say this is an important book. I really want to download this. So I'm going to go back to the detailed record of this book. And there's an option, download this book offline. I want to be able to look at it when I'm offline. The first thing it's going to tell me to do is please sign into your EBSCOhost account. And if you do not have an account, you can create a new account. It only takes 20 seconds probably. I'm going to go ahead and sign into it. I use my email address as my username. I can remember that. I'm going to log in. And I'm going to get a pop-up screen. And it's going to tell me that I can check out this book for up to 14 days. And I check out and download. And this is probably maybe too small for you to see. But down here, it tells me some viewing requirements. Um, so if you want to put this on an Apple or an Android device, you, I, really, I strongly encourage you and recommend that you have Blue Fire Reader. This is a free ebook app um, that you can get. And you also need an Apple, a Adobe ID. But let's just go ahead. I just want to show you what happens when I check out and download. Gives me a message that the ebook was checked out successfully. And on my desktop, I can view this in Adobe Digital Editions 3.0. And this is a once again a free ebook app. So on the desktop, to view this, I would use Adobe Digital Editions. And I'm going to go ahead and cancel that and not open any of that right there. So right now, I'm currently 
logged into my EBSCOhost account, and so I can go back to the full text of this book, and I can continue to take notes, save those notes, and they're always going to be there. As long as I sign into my EBSCOhost account, they're going to remain in there. Okay. There's some other options over here as far as you can print, um, you can download, but there are going to be uh, limitations in regards to printing, for instance. They're not going to let you print the entire book. It varies from book to book. It varies from publisher to publisher. Generally, the most you would be able to print if you chose to do that would be a chapter. Uh, in some cases, it's only a page at a time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to check, I'm going to turn it over to Beth, and she's going to uh, talk about OverDrive. Okay, thanks, John. And it does seem as if I have control over the screen. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it worked. Okay, everybody, uh, what is OverDrive? I'll be showing you OverDrive. It's an ebook resource that allows you to read ebooks and listen to audiobooks on a wide variety of personal devices, including your tablet, smartphone, and computers. Uh, the large majority of our OverDrive ebooks and audiobooks can be downloaded to a Kindle device, Kindle app, or reading listening device, something that is not yet available through our other ebook vendors, such as EBSCOhost, John just showed you. Uh, via OverDrive, you can check out three items at a time, and the checkout period is for three weeks. At the end of the three weeks, the items will automatically be checked into the system. Okay. Uh, to find ebooks from OverDrive, begin at our library homepage under the heading Find and click on the article database. Hey, John and yes. Kelly, we can hear you guys. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> okay, so once we're here at the listing, up in the upper left-hand corner, you will find the alphabet representing an alphabetical list of databases. Simply click on the O for OverDrive. In finding OverDrive in the list of titles, you can notice here there's an I information icon to the right. You can click on this icon for additional help in using and downloading OverDrive titles. Pay special notice to the hot link to the library guide to ebooks here. John's going to talk more about that at the end of our presentation. In your uh, database listing, just click on the OverDrive hot link. It takes you directly to our OverDrive homepage where we list all of our ebooks and audiobooks that are available. As you can see from the top of the screen, we make available both ebooks and audiobooks. We have foreign language resource study guides for our students, as well as travel guides for those of students and faculty that are traveling abroad, and we also supply study resources, exams, entrance guides for professional exams. Uh, plus, we have popular reading in both ebook and audiobook form, plus we have available titles for children and teens. To show you some examples of how to use OverDrive, I'm going to scroll down to our Learn a Language icon. As an example, you can see that our ebooks are marked with an icon which represents an open book. And the audiobooks are marked with an icon that is a headphone set. How to tell whether or not a book is available is, in this case, the Portuguese titles here at the bottom are currently checked out. As you can tell, the icons are in a lighter shade. Uh, Italian for Dummies, on the other hand, is available since the book icon is darker. Once you find a title that interests you, you simply hover over the title and click borrow. And at this point, you'll be you'll be prompted to enter your banner ID 
to sign into OverDrive. And at that point, you've checked out the book. And once you've checked out the ebook, you can read the ebook within the OverDrive browser simply by clicking on the read icon. This is by far the simplest way to read your ebook, but it does require that you have an internet connection. Another option on reading the book, instead of reading on your uh, desktop computer, is to download the title onto a personal reading device. What I prefer is to download the ebook onto my Kindle app on my iPhone in order to allow me to read the book wherever I find myself, regardless of whether or not I have an internet connection. And while the procedure for downloading ebooks to your Kindle app on your iPhone is not extremely difficult, uh, the many steps needed to set this up can seem somewhat confusing and tiresome. So in order to download ebooks to your Kindle reading device or app, it is necessary to download the OverDrive Media Console, to have an Amazon account, and to either have a Kindle reading device or have downloaded the Kindle app onto your smartphone or tablet. What I highly recommend is that in order to set up your personal device for OverDrive eBooks, you bring your device to the library and allow one of us to assist you. We have done it several times and it can make an easy process for you. Download instructions for a large variety of personal devices because we all have different devices from our phones to our iPads to our desktops are available on the OverDrive site or via the eBook Collections Library Guide, which John will talk about. If you want to do it from the OverDrive site, you just go to Help here at the top of the screen. Click on OverDrive Help. You know, me working through John's screen ten does, does tend to slow things down. When I have it on my own screen, it's not this slow. The next, follow the next logical step to getting started. And here you simply scroll down the page to select help from your devi desired device or platform, what you'll be using. And since I'm downloading books onto my Kindle app on an iPhone, I simply select Kindle Instructions and getting started with Kindle reading apps. And here I find a helpful series of videos walking me through the process of setting up my device. What I highly recommend, as I said, is if you want to set this up, come into the library, find John or I or some other helpful librarian, and we will help you with setting that up on your device. Once you have the OverDrive Media Console app, an Amazon account, and the Kindle app downloaded, the actual process of transferring eBooks from OverDrive to your personal device is really very simple. Um, going to your OverDrive bookshelf where you've already checked that book out to read on your desktop. Simply download, tap on the download drop down selection box and you select Kindle eBook and then confirm and download. This takes you to your Amazon site where you select Get Library Book. At this point, since I've signed out of my Amazon account, I'll be signing back in. And here I select which of my many devices I would like Amazon to deliver that ebook to. You can see I have Kramer EE, I have Kramer EE iPad 2, and I have my iPad, and I also have my cloud reader. Since I know my iPhone is my Kramer EE account, I'll select that account and continue. Okay. And at this point, the ebook has actually been delivered to my iPhone. And at this point, I'm going to open up my webcam. Hello, everyone. Can everyone see me? Someone could just give me the thumbs up. I'll go ahead and continue to show you my iPad or my iPhone. Okay, great. So here's my phone, and I'll hold it there. And hopefully you can see my Kindle app in the top, top row of my iPhone. Clicking on my Kindle app, you can see at the top how Italian for Dummies is actually downloading on my phone at this point. And it looks like it's downloading fairly slowly. 
So I'll probably show you one of my other books that I've downloaded onto my iPhone Kindle app in the past. So here's what the print looks like on my iPhone. Um, some people tell me that the print size is too small for them to enjoy reading an iPhone, but for me, I love the convenience of having a library in my back pocket. Some of the options for an iPhone, if you can see on the bottom, you can change the size of the type on your phone. So if you can see how large it is here, I can actually go in and greatly increase the size on my iPhone app for how large I'd like to read. Simply scrolling through pages by flicking through. Okay. Um, I also download Overdrive app, uh, Overdrive eBooks onto my iPhone for when I travel by car, particularly the audiobooks. I find that by connecting the audiobooks to the speakers within my car, um, I always have entertainment while I travel. Recently, on a trip out of the country, I downloaded three eBooks onto my phone. One was a travel guide to Egypt since I had a day-long layover in Cairo. One was an audio book for me to use to improve my French while traveling, and the third was a nonfiction title for my leisure reading. And when I finished that book, I simply used a Wi-Fi connection to return that title and check out a new ebook to read from Appalachian's ebook collection. Um, in that way, I didn't have to carry around my books with me, but had a wonderful, entertaining ebook collection on my phone. And with that, I'll pass it back to John. Okay, thanks, Beth. And I want to go, um, we've given you quite a bit of information here, and I want to give you a resource that I highly recommend you take a look at, and that's we have a library guide to ebooks. And on the middle of the home page, you'll see Get Help. The second bulleted item is Library Guides for Research. And you're going to see there's a search box here. You can put in ebooks, but if you also look at all these uh, browse by subject, you will see a link to ebooks. And I'm going to go to ebook collections. And this just is an overview of our ebook collections uh, at Appalachian. I'm just going to click on the ebook collections at ASU. And we talked about the ebook collection from EBSCOhost and OverDrive. Um, just one thing I wanted to mention about the ebook collection from EBSCOhost. Uh, like I said, there's 120,000 plus uh, primarily academic titles. Uh, whereas OverDrive, besides the travel guides and language, will give you some popular fiction type uh, titles. We also have tabs for OverDrive and the software or the apps you may need, um, the videos to help you set up your device, all that information is there. I just want to show you the EBSCO. And it walks you through, there are four steps to set up your device. And if this looks overwhelming to you, um, Beth has already given you an invitation a couple times to come in. I encourage you to come into the library and we can help you with this. Once you have it set up, it is very easy to download books through to your i I have an iPad for instance, and how I d easily download is I go into the EBSCO ebook collection through my iPad the same way I showed you. I went to the li library's homepage, I go to article databases, and I go directly into the EBSCO ebook collection and download um, ebooks to my iPad. But I want to encourage you just to take a look at this. Um, for instance, free EBSCO eBooks and Audiobooks Support Center. Depending on what type of a device, it will give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to download and view items on your Android, your iPhone, whatever you may have. There's also uh, links to just the different software you need, the Adobe ID, the Blue Fire Reader app that'll take you there. Talk about what the Blue Fire Reader app is, how it works. Over on the left, EBSCO eBooks app, 
downloading ebooks tutorial will take you directly into tutorial. We'll get, walk you through the process of downloading ebooks. So there's a lot of information here for EBSCO and for Overdrive. I really uh, want to point out to you now the ebook um, basics. It's the tab on the far right. I'll just show you this table. And it's going to tell you the vendor. We've been talking about ebook collection as the first one, the different formats that the ebooks are in. If there's a checkout period and there is 14 days, eBrary is another collection that gives you option of 7 or 14. Um, this is pretty much set by the vendor. Uh, we have limited control over checkout periods and whether there even is a checkout period. As you go down here, you can see there's other collections we have. For instance, sorry, Safari Books Online, which has a lot of technology and computer related books. Checkout is not available. You're, you can only view it on the desktop. Or if, if you have an iPad, you have to go in through the library website. Um, it tells you what you can download, whether or not you can download a complete book or not. And once again, some of this is set by uh, the publisher's um, rights. And so for eBrary, they may limit you to only 60 pages or a complete book. It varies from title to title. And then in the final column, printing. Um, most of them will set a maximum if you want to print. Some will give you just individual articles. Um, for instance, Overdrive, there's no printing. I'm not sure. Well, you would, but you know, there's always students wanting to uh, print out material and read it um, in print-based. So this is the eBooks Basics tab. It gives you basic information about the eBooks and what are some of the features and functionality of the eBooks. I want to show you one last thing here, and that is I'm going to go back to the EBSCOhost eBook collection. When you go to the opening screen and scroll down on your far left corner at the bottom, you'll see ebook support information, learn more. And there's information of searching ebooks, downloading ebooks, but what I want to show you is off to the far right, ebooks on your iPad. So this is particularly important if you do have an iPad. There's a video here. Sorry, that was quite a bit. That was pretty loud, I bet. There's a video here. It's a less than two minutes long. It will walk you through the steps to set up your iPad with the Blue Fire Reader and Adobe ID and having an EBSCO, uh, EBSCO host account. And so you can do all that real, literally in less than two minutes. It's very simple, and I strongly encourage you to to take a look at this video that will just walk you through the steps to get your iPad set up for ebook downloading. Okay, that's um, all I have for our ebook collections library guide. Um, if there's, I don't know if uh, Kelly, if you wanted to open this up to if there's questions that uh, people who are listening would like to ask us.